Yes! Yes! I've just seen a sign for an electric vehicle charging station. That is fun. Hey! It's finally time to get rid of what we call the gas guzzler. But that was the past, this is the future, and I am going electric. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Maddie Goes Electric, and to my new house. We have successfully moved in, we haven't been here very long at all, but slowly but surely we're getting rid of the boxes. However, today is the day that the new car turns up. I'm very curious to know whether any of you have guessed which one I picked based on the last episode. I think the idea for this week and this episode is just going to be me filming my experience of how I get on with a new electric car. So we're gonna find out about how I can possibly charge at home, maybe go and find my first charger at the local shops, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah. Hope you enjoy and come along with me. Right now, where is the car? Here it is, here it is, okay, it's coming in now. Da, 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 da. The car has arrived! <laughs> wow! Oh, I'm so excited! So I have gone with the Kia e-Nero because it is a lovely car and the extensive range is absolutely a comfort blanket to me because I'm completely new to this. But I did want to say that I've got the Kia e-Nero on a short term lease, which will give me plenty of time to get to grips with driving an EV, but also by the end I should be able to work out whether this is the right car for me long term. Um, I've been focusing on the e-Nero and the Kona as two electric cars with really big ranges, but I did just want to mention that there are other cars out there that are available at slightly different price points. You've just got to do your research and work out what's right for you. And there are definitely people who are better positioned, who are experts, who can recommend these cars to you. Um, and along a similar thread, in this series, I'm not really going to be reviewing the car so much simply because I'm not the best person to do it. This is more about my experience with the car and how I get on as a first time electric vehicle driver. Okay, back to the episode. If you hadn't already guessed, I decided to go with the Kia e-Nero and Robin from Drive Electric is here. She's just been delivering it. And if it's okay, you're gonna give me a bit of a tour of yeah. the car. Yeah. Um, so I guess one of the first questions that anyone is going to have when they get the car is, how do I charge it at, at home, especially? Yeah, so could we sort of do a little mini yeah, tour and see so, what first, what's that, what we have to do? So the front is where the charging cap is on the e-Nero, so it's down here. Yep, okay. The cables are usually stored in the boot. Okay. So I'll go grab a cable, we'll open right, up then. the flap and we'll go from there. Connectors are usually kept in the boot and this is what we've got. You've got your charging cable that you'll use for your charging unit. Charging, when you say charging unit, what do you mean by that? The one that you'll get installed at home. Okay, brilliant. Right, that's the blue one. And then this looks more familiar to you. Hey! Okay, I'm gonna put this one down quickly. <laughs> and it matches your jumper lovely. Oh my gosh, I'm literally blending in. <laughs> so this is a very recognizable plug. So this is definitely yeah. something that I can use to charge the car at home. Yes. All yeah. right. Not recommended for all the time, but when you're visiting family and friends, um, out and about, or before you get your charging unit installed, right, it's safe and easy to okay. use. Okay, all right then. So, can you just give me a little sort of like, yeah, how do I make this work, Robin? So, plug it <laughs> into the house. All right, so we're gonna, we'll find a way to get the orange cable into the house. Thankfully, I do have a driveway, so I can pull the car quite close to the house and I will be able to put that through a window. How convenient that is, we will soon find out. But then I've got this end, the other end. Um, but I guess we need to have a com conversation about connectors because not every single electric car will have the same connector. It's a bit of a minefield. So talk to me about, so what, so what do you call this festival? Because, I mean, usually we would call that just like the, 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 the petrol flap. Just literally the, <laughs> literally the petrol flap, okay. So the charge flap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk to me about the charge flap <laughs> and my connecting options inside it. So you've got two on the e Nero. This one at the top mm -hmm. is what you'll use um, most of the time, which is your seven kilowatt charging, which is what you're doing at home. So that is seven kilowatt charger. Yeah. You can also connect the three pin plug, which yeah. does it at about three kilowatts, or the sort of smaller, slower charging. 
uh, units. Mm -hmm. And then if you were to go to a rapid charger, yeah. you take off both of these. Yeah. And it's a bit like a puzzle. Right. You just, when you get to the charging unit, you see the one that looks like that, and that'll be the one for your car. Okay, so the top one alone is seven kilowatts, will also work for three kilowatts, which is what you'll use if you're charging at home. Yeah. What does this bottom one do in terms of numbers? So that's where you get the rapid charger. Right. So depending on the charging unit itself, it can uh -huh. be anything from around 22 kilowatts up to about 50 kilowatts. So that basically just allows extra juice to get into the car. Yes, but it is controlled slightly by what the car can take. So it will okay. vary on car to car. All right then. But um, yeah, and the charging point that you're using. The type of connector that this car has is a type two connector. However, not every single electric car has the same connector types, right? Yes. I think, I try to get my head around all of the all of the various connectors and it is it is a bit of a minefield and I would say if you're new to this unless you're really interested don't worry about trying to understand every type and model of car just know what, what you, you need to know for your car it's a little bit like if you have an Android phone and you've never used Apple you're not gonna have an Android and worry about how to use an Apple at the same time that's how I think about it yeah, no, that's correct. so just so don't worry about it this is a type 2 connector and I can charge at home and I can charge quickly Right, so I have got the orange connector, aka the one that goes from oh, this door, uh, the one that goes from the Type 2 connector at the front of the car to a three pin plug. And we are going to see if I can actually charge it from the kitchen. Again, it's definitely worth saying that it's not recommended to charge it at a three pin plug all the time, but if you're in a pinch and you might be at a family's house, then it's a good way to go. So let's plug it in. Plugged into the wall, I'm now giving the Type 2 connector to Robin, who is handily outside for me. Will it reach? Will it reach? All right, crikey, I'm losing a smoothie maker. Hang on. That's it, don't worry, don't worry. Sorted, sorted. Is it gonna go? It does. Yeah! Awesome! Brilliant news. So, the connector will reach into my kitchen, so I can put it in the three pin plug at the wall, pop the cable out of the window and charge the car that way. The, the car is connected, it's charging, and the display is giving me some information. So what's going on here? So on your um, dash, you're mm -hmm. seeing the charging information. So it's currently telling you the remaining time to get to 100% is 27 hours and 30 minutes. Right, so that's a scary long time, but that's because we are using... We're using the three-pin plug. Which is considered slow charging. Yeah. We're currently drawing between 2.2 to 2.3 kilowatts, mm -hmm. and that's based on the fact that the energy and everything that's in the house to make sure the car's safe, the house is safe, it's managing that flow of electricity. Okay, interesting. All right, so it's not just going to take as much as it possibly can and risk blowing something else. Yeah, that's correct. Ah, it's clever. All right, then. And then we have a flashing light up here on the dash as well. Yeah, so the first light and it is flashing at the moment, that's because we've got 20% battery. As you start to go through, once you've got one third, it'll go solid, and the mm -hmm. second one will start to flash, and so on and so forth until it's fully charged. So it's kind of like a traffic light system, yeah. in a way. Which is quite useful, because it means that if I'm inside the house, I should just be able to see that light, so I'll know that it's definitely charging. Obviously, this isn't the same for all vehicles, but there may be something similar. Yeah, they all vary. They all have a very sort of similar... Um, a way to make them friendly for you to mm -hmm. understand what's happening but they will all vary slightly as to what they do at the moment the car is charging because it is plugged in and we have told it to charge however um i know that my electricity is slightly cheaper in the evenings and there are ways that i can actually program the car to make sure that it's only taking um electricity during off-peak hours so we just need to go into the settings and do a little bit of fiddling to kind of set that um, we're just going to charge management and then if you are a commuter you can you just set your departure time to when it is you're likely to leave the house um, and once you've done that you can then schedule your charging to use off-peak off -peak tariffs only or off-peak tariffs and um, prioritize them and what was the dis the difference between those two so if the car isn't fully charged, it will still charge if you have it as prioritised. So it will prioritise to charge off peak, right? But it will still charge out of um, if you need the you need the battery. Okay. But if you purely want to charge off peak, then you tick off peak mm -hmm. tariffs only. So you're only going to be charging between those hours. So that's quite good. That means that I can get home, I can park the car, I can plug it in, but 
it's actually not going to start officially charging or taking electricity from the house till the rates are cheaper so it's good that i can do that yeah um of, of course i could just plug it in when it hits six o'clock at night but in case i forget it's just nice to know that the car's set up to do that yeah brilliant thank you so much that's okay i'm so excited to sort of like you know get to know the car have a bit of a play um, and see how i get on so thank you you're welcome here we go first month with an electric car greg do you want to come and see the car? Yeah. Greg's just been working. Look, look what we have charging out of our kitchen window. I heard a load of kerfuffle, but I didn't want to interrupt. Ah! Ah! Robert! Yeah! We it's have, a beauty! We have the Robert De Niro. This Robert, not Robert yeah. Llewellyn. Although no. he's also a beauty. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Um, and the best news is, I wasn't sure if this cable, the orange one, was yeah. going to was actually going to fit or was going to be long enough um, so from, to reach that. the driveway to the ah, house. Ah, you got yeah. to go into the house. So we're just using a standard three pin, which is incredibly slow. I was going to say, how long does that take? 27 hours. <laughs> but it's only on 20% at the moment, so... Okay, so... Uh, it's, at the moment, it's only got you about... You want 80% of 27 hours. Yeah, but the, thing, the key is... a lot is, of hours. But the key is not to think about it like that. All, it's 20% but what that means is that we've got about 40 miles in it right. so which is enough to get us to somewhere where we can charge it faster or definitely plenty for me to drop you to the station and get I was back say, I and could charge actually do the lift that's fine I can do that but the good thing is we can leave this charging overnight when I think our electricity tariff is a bit cheaper which well, is no, good no 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 because then the window's going to be open yeah, the kitchen might get a bit cold, but we won't know. We're upstairs. It's, okay. It's pretty Baltic in here now. The thing is, it's not necessarily the most convenient way to charge the car. We know that, and I'm going to look into getting a charge point, a little box put on the outside of the Ooh. house, so we don't have to worry about this. You say little. Is it actually little? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's not like some mahusive. No, it's like... Which would also be fine, It's like the right? size of a lockbox, but you're going to have to wait till the next episode to find out about that. Oh, For now, geez. we're enjoying the fact we can charge it slowly at home and I will drop you off at the station. Thanks. I'm just waiting in the car for Greg, <laughs> who is actually in a tux <laughs> because um, we've got to go to an award ceremony tonight, but he has to go into London early for meetings. And there he is, <laughs> looking dapper. <laughs> well, well, well. I've come. Uh, come on I've in. Come, I've come dressed as the Robert. I see you have, it's gone. I see you've dressed for the occasion. Your first, gosh, it's, I mean, it's only your first drive in an electric well, it's, car. I you thought didn't... it was a, a quite special Clearly. Time. Something to Clearly. mark. Clearly. Sure. Little funky start every time. Let's take park off. And let's try putting it into reverse. Reverse. Oh, cameras. Like if I was going down a hill, for example, I could take my foot off the pedal and I could actually regen quite a lot of electricity back into the battery. So right now I'm using it and you can see because the dial's going way over. If I pull back, there you go. Now I'm gaining, I'm gaining mileage. Cool, right? Very clever. There. Thanks for the lift. You're welcome. Um, right, I'm going to go and take myself onto the train. All right, have fun. Thanks. I'll see I'll you, later, you later once you've you had some personal time? time with Robert. Weird, but yeah. Weird, strange. I've just finished dropping Greg off at the station and I went the long way home just so I could take Robert for a bit of a spin. And I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I am actually a bit of a nervous driver. And with our previous car and every car I have owned previously, which have all been petrol, I've just felt like driving them has been a bit of a struggle. You know, you've always got to like try and fight to find the right gear or you've got to pull it around corners or the braking feels a little bit abrupt. Granted, I have not had the world's best cars, but you know, it, it's just been a bit, it's just been a bit tough. And that's not necessarily ideal if you aren't always that confident in the driver's seat. However, without fail, every single electric car I have ever driven, driven has felt the opposite of that. I don't know how to explain it other than that it just feels a bit more collaborative. The car is easier to drive and it's trying to help you out. I particularly find the regen, that's the whole, the car essentially brakes for you. I find that so helpful. So all I'm trying to say here is forget about the benefits of electric cars versus petrol for a second. Forget about the costs and all of the other sort of factors. If 
you're a nervous driver and you want something that you might actually enjoy driving, seriously consider electric because they're fun and simple to drive. So that is what my thoughts are after my first drive today. It's been a few days um, and the orange cable, the car, the kitchen window and myself have been getting on considerably well. Uh, but let's be honest, it's not the most practical way to charge a car. So I'm finally biting the bullet and I'm going in search of a charge point. So this is going to be my first proper charge away from the house. Um, the thing is, since moving here, I haven't seen any about. There aren't any that have been particularly visible. So I'm going to have to go hunting for one. And I've been recommended an app called ZapMap and I spoke to the lovely Melanie who is one of the co-founders and she told me all about it. Firstly, welcome to my home. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is Melanie from ZapMap. Thank you so much for being here. I have just about mastered slow charging at home with the new electric vehicle, um, but I need something a little bit quicker. So I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a fast charger nearby. What yep. I'm being told we call destination chargers. Yep but I don't know how to find them. Um, Great. And that's well, where you yeah, come in. That's why, that's why I come in. Yeah, you, see, you, can, you can look at ZapMap, and ZapMap's a map of public charging points all around the UK. Okay. So there's over 10,000 public charge points available for, for people to charge at, yeah. um, and over 15,000 devices. Does that surprise people? Because 10,000 is a lot. Yeah, it's, it's an awful lot of charging points. And in fact, um, there are more charging locations than there are petrol stations, and that definitely surprises people. Wow. Oh, I, mm. I would not have thought that at all, actually. So how, how do I find out what's available to me in my area? Well, basically, download ZapMap. It's available as an app, free mm -hmm. to use, and go to the area you're going to. Where, where would you like to...? Uh, so let's go centre of Birmingham. OK, um, yeah. So get to Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, and you can see already see that there's a, there's a lot of public charging points around. OK. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of icons, little mm -hmm. pop-ups, and there are different colours. So what do the different colours mean? So, so the yellow ones are, are the slow chargers, so that's the equivalent of the charging charging at home. Okay. Um, fast chargers, I think, are the ones we're looking for. These are the destination chargers that you might use to sort of graze for a couple of hours, top up top up your charging. Mm -hmm. And then the rapid chargers, or when you're on a longer journey, those are the ones that are the really rapid, rapid, speedy charging. Okay, so for now, let's look at fast charging. Okay. Um, so something that's going to get me a bit more juice than my current situation. All right, so you just tap on one, yep. open it up. Open it up. Click on it and it, it tells you that there's uh, two little icons coming up and tells you there's two two connectors there. So that's the equivalent of a nozzle in a, in a standard uh, mm. petrol station. And it shows you whether it's available or not. So it's mm. updated every five minutes oh. with information directly from the network. Okay, so as long as you know what connector type that your the car you're using requires, yep. you can then go on to ZapMap and you can just search and then make sure that you'll actually be able to use it when you get there. Yeah, exactly. So not all charge points necessarily cater for all connectors. No, but but pretty pretty much on the fast charging, they're pretty much all type two, so, okay. you'll, so you'll be fine. Okay, fantastic. So I found one um, and then it's just a case of going up to it and then plugging in and charging it? Yeah, I mean, you need, you need your cable, so you need yeah. to get your cable out of the boot. Plug one end into your your on, your your charger, and then the other mm. end into the charging point, and then you'll need to make sure you can pay for it. I was going to say it might sound naive, <laughs> yeah. but but pay, but that's a that's a different setup. So depending on the sort of charge point you go to, yep. that will affect how you go about paying for yeah, it. Sure, and that might require a different app depending on the yeah network. Or, or yeah, and so, some of them are contactless, so you can use your credit and debit card, and some of them you need you need to have a different app to pay for it. All right, that's so easy. Okay. I've opened up the app and I'm looking for a fast charger. So something that is um, significantly faster than the setup we've got at home, uh, but I'm not looking for rapid either. So I'm not going on a long journey here. I don't need to get myself to 80 or 100%. Um, so yes, I'm looking for a blue icon, a blue icon with a lightning bolt through it. And there are a couple around. So I'm gonna open some of them up. This one is restricted. It's at um, a car dealership. This one is at a car park and I don't particularly fancy just going to sit in a car park because I don't actually have any jobs to do. So what are my other options? Okay. Ah, interestingly, there is one at a local pub, which I didn't expect. I didn't expect, actually. So perhaps I could go there because I am in need of lunch. It is nearly two o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. So I'm going to head there. I'm just going to open it up and check that it's actually working. Hello, come on. No issues reported, type two, that's what I've got, that's a good thing. Right, looks like we're going to the pub. See you in a second. 
Right, the pub definitely has a car park, so I'm going to assume it's up here. Yes, <gasps> yes, I've just seen a sign for an electric vehicle charging station. That is fine. Hey! Bloody! Gosh, that's so simple. I can't believe how simple that is. What? This is great. This is so good. Oh my gosh, talk about an entry level charging point. <laughs> oh, I'm switching things up, changing the cameras. Let's go and have a little look. Okay. Firstly, no one's about. Uh, that's it. It really is that simple. It's just a plug. Plug in the wall. My one is just there and all I need to do is get my cable out and connect the two. Surely, surely this is too easy. I guess, wow, okay. I'll get, the, get my cable out then. Okay, with type two cables, you have two ends. Both of them are type two. One of them is a male, one of them is a female. Basically one is smaller than the bigger one. Doesn't really matter, just use the one that fits, right? Okay, so into this plug, I am putting the female type two just like so. In it goes, no drama. Gosh, I really don't have to do anything. I don't even have to download an app. Okay, and now we'll move you over to the car so we can plug this one in. This is the other end of the Type 2. Plug it in, wait for something to happen. That's locked in place, I can hear it click. And if we're charging, it should go green. It's going green. This was so easy! Genuinely surprised how easy that just was. Um, I didn't plan this, but as, as charging stations go, I really do feel like this is entry level. Um, I know that if you were to use ones that are on the motorway or especially faster chargers that you'd absolutely have to download some sort of app or at least hand some money over best thing about this is that it's free. I mean, I'm assuming the reason the pub offer this is because it's something um, for for their customers and it looks like they've got some sort of like little holiday lets or some accommodation as well. So it's just a great thing to offer people. But the fact this is only a short while away from the house is great. Well, this is charging, so I think I'm going to maybe have a plowman's. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and as always, thanks for watching, if you have been, and I'll see you next time. Bye! We have decided to get a home charge point. Let's start at the very beginning. What is a charge point? Things are getting pretty frosty. I really am doing this for the first time. <laughs> we are slowly but surely becoming fully fledged electric car owners. Take a look at the events page on our website to find out about fully charged live events happening near you. www.fullycharged.show Right, we're in drive. Right, we're yeah! Whee! Hey! Charging interrupted. Please check the charger. What, what's... Oh, it's... Um, what's... Oh, it stopped.